It was this engineering marvel that was placed just outside of Farmville. Just a neat, neat facility to go across. It has a historic presence that has a place in history for eternity. Um, actually, it, hybrids was not supposed to ever happen uh, in the initial concept of a railroad in Southside Virginia. What happened is in the mid-1800s, the residents of Farmville petitioned the Southside Railroad to bring the rail through Farmville. And they did that by pledging um, that they would raise $100,000 in order to build Highbridge. At this point, they were still using bateau on the Appomattox River to get their goods to Petersburg. So you can imagine you're at the mercy of the level of the river as to how far you could go doing that. The railroad would make it so that they would have a more consistent means of getting goods and people to and from markets or to places. It did require a bridge that was going to be 2,422 feet long and it was going to be 117 feet over the Appomattox River Valley. The bridge ended up being 20 large brick pillars with a tall, 17 foot tall wooden superstructure on top. Amazing, 21 spans. The piers were 112 feet apart on center. So you had 20 piers, 21 spans, because the last span has to get to the final abutment. They settled on the brick piers because of the superior quality of clay in the area to make bricks from, and it would only be a third of the cost as opposed to making all stone piers. Now the original bridge, it was more than $100,000 to build, it was $166,000, and it opened in 1854. The uh, chief engineer, when, he, when it was built, he said there's bridges longer but not as tall, and bridges taller not as long. And with that, this is by far the, the largest bridge in the world. So that, you know, the residents of Farmville really changed the course of history by bringing rail into, into Farmville, and it's had a lasting effect on the town. Railroads were major artery, with major arteries were important to the Confederacy, not only transporting tr troops, but mainly foodstuffs for the army. The Civil War, no one ever thought it would come to Farmville. And so, you know, Highbridge had some value as a target, but it wasn't, it was never an immediate threat till the very end of the war. During the war years, it became a strategic and critical supply route to Petersburg, which funneled off into Richmond as well. It moved goods, material, troops. Because of that significance, the Confederate government of Virginia authorized construction of four earthen fort redoubts to be built on, to guard the approaches to the bridge. The fighting for High Bridge takes place on April 6th and April 7th. There's actually two engagements for the bridge. What precipitated the battle of High Bridge was Lee was retreating from Petersburg West. And so they, uh, they fought at Sailor's Creek on April 6th. April 7th, um, Lee, Lee's men get to High Bridge and their order is to destroy the bridge and make it impassable. Once the uh, Confederate Army did reach High Bridge, which was after the battle at Sailor's Creek on the night of April 6th, they began crossing through the night and into the morning heading towards Farmville. And once they reached the western portion of the bridge and got as many people across as they could, they set fire to it and burned four spans of the high bridge. So the Union Army was not able to use that in, in their pursuit of Lee's army. Below High Bridge was a small wagon bridge and they did catch it on fire, but quick moving Union troop would reach the bridge, put the fire off, and consequently they saved the wagon bridge and that would be the way two Army Corps of the Union Army would cross the Appomattox River. Grant men captured that bridge and it pushed Lee's men out of Farmville and two days later they surrender at Appomattox. So the, the Battle of High Bridge is very pivotal to the end of the Civil War. So with the Industrial Revolution, we are moving from more of an agrarian society to industrialized, and the rail really helped transform that. And so the rail, it connected the community for goods and services. And so this is a game changer for Southside Virginia. 
train station uh, and the trains itself were an integral part of Farmville. And we used to have regular train service. That stopped probably about 1978. Pepsi commercial was done probably around the same time, 78, 79. That train went back and forth across High Bridge. It was an old train they bought in here. And uh, they went back and forth across High Bridge, uh, you know, until they got it exactly right. But something is interesting. After the post-Civil War to the end of the, the uh, 1800s, trains are getting more technologically advanced. And so they're getting heavier and longer. And what happens is that the original high bridge was not designed to carry the traffic that it was. With the larger, heavier freight loads on high bridge and the years of usage, the railroad became aware that they're gonna to have to come up with a more permanent solution than to just patch up the original high bridge. The new high bridge, the one that we, you walk across today, was a, a steel structure and it was opened in 1914. What ended up happening is the demise of high bridge as a railroad bridge, it started in 1916. And it started in 1916 because they opened the belt line. And the belt line was a rail, railroad that it bypassed Farmville. It was pretty apparent by the late 90s, early 2000s that a rail through Farmville was not going to be needed. Uh, you know, a lot of things transpired, um, you know, with the, the railroad, but a lot of people were employed by the railroad, and uh, it's a, uh, an old part of our history. After the rail line was torn up, some local individuals got the idea of turning it into what is known as rails to trails. In 2005, um, the abandonment of Norfolk Southern's railway through Farmville took place. In 2006, the 31.2 miles of abandoned track was, a, was donated to the Virginia Department of Conservation and Recreation for the purpose of a state park. Now, the park was, um, was built in sections. They didn't just open it all at once. They, they gradually did different sections. The last piece of it was High Bridge, which opened in April of 2012. That was the last piece. So you're looking at a four or five year process to get the park fully open to the 31.2 miles that we see today. I think it was long awaited, and there's this expectation that this is something great for our community, and the public would enjoy it. It would add a value to the quality of life, to the people that live here. With programmings, we do roughly 10 races a year on the trail. We also, we do a lot of educational programs. So we do bridge tours with the bridge, explaining the, the history. We also look at the engineering of the structure. And then the, we have one really big event in the summer. It's a Firefly Festival. And we open the bridge up in the evening and you can come out and view fireflies from High Bridge. We're not just a one hit wonder with the bridge, but we actually showcase this entire area get a perspective that you don't often get. No matter what day you go, no matter what time of year, the trail and the bridge, were, or they're gonna give you something different. It's pretty amazing when you walk out on it, you know, to look at uh, across the, the Appomattox River area there, and it's just, uh, you know, a beautiful view. I think it's very important that we, we don't forget that a small little town in, in Central Virginia moved a railway, railway to build a bridge across the Appomattox River. It's an icon, um, I believe, of, of our history in Virginia, the history of this area, but it's also a testament to what man can do and, and also as we adapt through time.